Uh, let's have a little look at uh, this week's NXT then, Nick. So another really good show. And I, I've said this from day one. I mean, NXT's always been a fabulous show. And uh, to be honest with you, when, when they've gone to two hours from October last year, they just stepped it up time and time again. And their matches just, you know, they, they never fail to, uh, to to kind of amaze people, really. But um, I mean, this week's show kicked off with Dominic Dijakovic in a match against uh, relative newcomer Cameron Grimes. They had a really entertaining match, a really good opener to this week's NXT. Um, and the fans were really into it as well. Towards the end of the match, uh, Damian Priest comes out here, attacks Dijakovic before kind of uh, diving uh, for cover over the railings into the front row. Um, after the attack, Dijakovic just manages to beat the referee 10 count, gets into the ring, but he's greeted by a Cameron Grimes uh, double foot stomp, which he calls the cave in for the one, two, three. Um, and this has to be one of the biggest victories in uh, Cameron Grimes' NXT career so far. Um, so, th- so that was a really good opener. Then we had a, quite a big announcement from NXT general manager William Regal, who said that in the coming weeks, uh, there'll be a series of qualifying matches in the NXT women's division with the winner of each of them qualifying matches going on. And they'll be entered into a, a number one contenders ladder match at NXT TakeOver Tampa over WrestleMania weekend. So that should be a particularly interesting match uh, with the added bonus of facing the winner of the match between Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair the following night at WrestleMania. So, you know, that's what I like to see in wrestling, to be honest with you, Nick, a, a match or matches with something on the line, something big at stake, um, uh, you know, for the winner. And in this case, it's a huge ladder match. People have to qualify to be part of that ladder match at TakeOver Tampa with the winner going on as the new number one contender. But uh, give, give us your thoughts on uh, on William Regal's announcement and this, this quite intriguing announcement is going to be qualifying matches for this uh, ladder match at uh, TakeOver Tampa then, buddy. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good journey. Uh, the women's division in NXT is off the chart. I think they've got the strongest uh, women's division across the the brand across the company. Well, just in wrestling in general. So you think about some of the potential matches it's going to lead up to, and it's yeah. I think we're going to. I don't think there will be a good match. I think everybody in that division has got the potential to have an awesome match. And whoever ends up in the you know, in the large match at the end uh, will have earned it, but will also you know bust the gut to put a performance on. Yeah, totally agree. And if you look at some of the names, I mean, you mentioned how hot the NXT Women's Division is and has been for a long, long time now. You know, you've got the likes of Candice LeRae, you've got the likes of Tiga Knox, Dakota Kai, you've got the likes of uh, Io Shirai, who will hopefully be coming back soon. And, you know, if, if those four alone are in that ladder match, that'd be pretty awesome. But, uh, you know, there's probably going to be other names thrown in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it should be pretty, pretty awesome. But uh, any any wrestlers within the NXT women's division you're particularly looking forward to being part of these qualified matches and any that you'd like to see go on to that ladder match in Tampa uh yeah sure I I think I just say if she's back in time for the uh for the competition uh she's going to be the the one to watch her and Belair I think will be the two standouts I presume Belair's going to be in it because she's always at the top of the chart so definitely yeah Yeah. that's going to be that's going to be really really hot I think you'll find obviously the Tegan Knox Dakota Kai storyline kind of continues on through the tournament. So one of those will probably cost the other one of the spot or something. Yeah. Um, I would love to see Knox in the ladder match, but I think depending on how long they want to go on with this Kai storyline for, I think they've still got that's still got legs that can go on for a bit further. Yeah, and when you consider, you know, the likes of uh, Tony Storm, she's not really kind of uh, had uh, a lot of matches since she's come up onto the black and gold brand. That'd be good to see more of her potentially <clears throat> and so many more. Uh, but that, that that's going to be really good and uh, quite a positive announcement from William Regal on that. I should imagine that we'll start seeing qualified matches possibly from as soon as next week. Uh, but then... In the next segment on this week's NXT, we saw Finn Balor. He came out to the ring for a, for a promo saying that uh, when the bell rings, he is the guy. Uh, Finn says that, uh, that he builds brands. He says that he's, uh, he's uh, conquered Japan. He's conquered Mexico. He's won the Intercontinental Championship, the Universal Championship. He's been the NXT uh, champion as well. Finn asks, who is the next one to get the Finn rub? Uh, then we get an unexpected visit from Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel from Imperium, of course. 
who say that the NXT UK champion Walter sends his regards. Uh, Finn was then quick to respond, taking out both members of Imperium. Uh, but as uh, Balor was about to destroy Fabian Arkner with a, a shotgun drop kick into the railings, Finn is blindsided by uh, a running forearm from uh, from out of nowhere by Marcel Bartel. And the Imperium pair, they strike with, uh, with a running knee uh, with uh, the head of Balor into the steel ring steps. I send a clear message to Finn Balor that uh, he has the attention of the current NXT UK champion, Walter. So, Nick, it looks like the Prince uh, will be the, you know, the next contender, quite possibly, to Walter's NXT UK crown. Um, I know that there was the announcement at TakeOver Portland about to NXT UK TakeOver Dublin, which is going to be an awesome show towards the end of uh, April, so after Mania. Um, and it almost certainly looks like they're setting up Finn Balor to be uh, Walter's next opponent, possibly in the main event of TakeOver Dublin. Um, but, uh, you, you know, what's your thoughts on what went down here? And, um, you know, with Finn Balor portraying himself as, as the biggest heel in NXT, it kind of looks like uh, almost overnight um, he's now turned babyface. But uh, what's your thoughts on what went down here then, buddy? Um, yeah, I think any time you get Imperium involved, uh, it's got to be entertaining. And yeah, if the you know the final result is going to be Finn Balor versus Walter, uh, I'm all for it. That's, that's potentially, it's just a shame it's not going to be on WrestleMania weekend. That to me is, could be the show stealer on any card. Uh, those two guys will just go hard and they'll just put on a hell of a match. And thought the actual segment was done really well and uh, it came out of nowhere. I wouldn't have you know, thought it was something that was going to happen. So I pleasantly surprised when they turned up. Always happy to see Finn. Uh, yeah, like I said about being the baby face, so um, I don't know. It's going to be one of those weird situations where it's a heel on heel match based technically, but yeah, Finn will be the one who. Will get the cheers over Walter, I presume, or it'll just be a 50 50 split with the audience. Yeah, I think, I think if, if that's uh, the main event they're going with for TakeOver Dublin, Finn Balor is going to be uh, um, over huge in the, with the, the Dublin oh. crowd, but uh, um, I think it's going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be, you know. <laughs> It's going to be a big night for Finn Balor. And, you know, we've been speculating for months now on social media, you know, who's going to be the guy to be the the, the number one contender who could possibly take the championship off of Walter. You know, we, we've suggested, could it be Tyler Bate in a rematch? Could it be Trent Seven? Could it be Jordan Devlin? Well, uh, you know, they're all tied up in, in other programs. Jordan Devlin is now the Cruiserweight champion, of course. So, you know, Finn Balor from left field uh, looks like it's a natural choice that uh, many of us didn't think of. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's going to be an awesome match. I'm, I'm sure it will take place in Dublin. I'm sure we we'll get more on this uh, kind of little storyline and this thread next week on NXT. But uh, I'm all for it. And, you know, a credible contender, a, a credible opponent for Walter. And, uh, you know, dare I say it, potentially, you know, we, we know what Finn Balor is all about. We know how good he is. But uh, I think he, he's definitely good enough to be the next uh, NXT UK champion. But uh, we will have to see. Uh, but that's a storyline that we'll see more of over the coming weeks. What happens if he wins it, though? You know, because he's going to be backwards and forwards. He's going to be on NXT UK. He's going to be not on NXT. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, I think, Walter needs it more than he does. But how do you have Finn not win it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Unless they, I don't know, potentially have uh, two matches. They could potentially have Walter versus Finn at TakeOver Tampa and then have the rematch at TakeOver Dublin. So Finn could win it in Tampa and then lose it to Walter in Dublin. I don't know, but uh, uh, that, that you know that, that's a feud that you can definitely get mileage out of and definitely get a good two or three matches out of. Um, you know, but uh, you know they could they could change the stipulation if they do decide to kind of have more than one match. But um, uh, yeah, like you say, Finn Balor being the NXT UK champion, you know NXT UK is a brand that is still it's, it's excellent action, but I still don't think it's taken off as much as uh, some of the other brands around uh, WWE at the moment. So, but maybe Finn Balor's you know could be a good figurehead for the brand, and he could be the one to really kind of lift NXT UK into prominence and make it exciting, get more people tuned in potentially. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely hooked. I'm definitely interested to see where this one goes. And that, that kind of storyline and angle from this Wednesday took me by surprise. Wasn't expecting it at all. But thinking about it, Walter versus Finn Balor makes perfect sense. So, uh, yeah, and there's a speculation as well, of course, 
there's probably more than speculation that Finn Balor is going to be at the NXT UK tapings in Coventry, which is the uh, next set of tapings leading us to uh, TakeOver Dublin, of course. So uh, we'll find out more when that goes down very, very soon. Uh, our next match from this week's NXT, though, Nick, was uh, Austin Theory against Tommaso Ciampa. So these two had a little bit of a confrontation last week after kind of Austin came out for his match, was interrupted by Tommaso Ciampa, and then uh, kind of had a bit of a set to and a bit of a beating by Tommaso, which led to this match on Wednesday. So it was a, a series of uh, moves from Theory, uh, Austin Theory, that, that had been genuinely concerned for Ciampa's surgically repaired neck. Uh, especially the buckle bomb that he delivered to Tommaso Ciampa and then the Yushi Garoshi. They both looked really, really painful. Uh, Theory threw everything at Ciampa in this match. Uh, the two fought outside with uh, Austin Theory throwing Ciampa into the barriers in the same way that Ciampa did to him the previous week. Um, but it was the former NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa who got the hard-fought victory after executing a Willow's Bell followed by a fairy tales ending for the pinfall and uh you know this match uh was really really good it was a competitive match uh you know the, the action after the match didn't stop there though we had john gargano he came to the ring he rushed the ring as a matter of fact in quite a fetching baby blue suit jacket uh <laughs> which he promptly took off uh but uh you know, he, he put a bit of a beating into his former DIY tag team partner, uh, you know, with a bit of a vicious attack uh, to put an added exclamation point to his heel turn after TakeOver Portland. So uh, it looks like going into TakeOver Tampa, I know we're talking about TakeOver Tampa an awful lot because that's our next uh, big show from NXT over WrestleMania weekend. But it looks like we've got, uh, you know, a heel Gargano going up against a babyface Champa. So it's the match we should have had last year, uh, apart from, you know, uh, Tommaso Champa being pulled um, just before having neck surgery. Um, but uh, roles are reversed this time, Nick. You've obviously got the babyface Champa, the heel Gargano going into it. It's going to be a hell of a match. Um, but uh, yeah, is, is that a match that fascinates you? Um, and uh, how does it kind of strike you with the roles being reversed this time round? Um, it's always going to be a match that sort of gets my interest. Those two um, just strike gold, but you know, pretty much 99% nine of the time. Uh, my only thing, I just can't see. Uh, Gorgano is a heel. It's just uh, Champo was great as a heel. He's awesome as a heel. Um, I just, I mean, if, they'll make it work. I've got zero doubt about it. I'm not sort of, it's not concerning. I'm not going to sort of bad mouth it and say, oh, you know, it's stupid. Um, they'll, they'll work it out somehow. I'm just skeptical of uh, Johnny Boy being the the bad guy. You know, he's just too, he's just too goddamn lovable to be a bad guy. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, I've got the same sentiments as you, to be honest with you. And uh, I know they, they tried to turn Gargano heel at some point last year, uh, yeah. but it, it was kind of a, it didn't really take off. Um, but so, you know, he's got to be really devilish and he's got to be really kind of heelish this time round to convince the fans. Um, but so he's making a good job of it so far. You know, these attacks. I mean, Tommaso Ciampa is obviously a beloved baby face now. You were quite right in what you said, that he was the, the, the most hated of heels, especially when he used to come out to no music and the fans were booing him and, you know, all sorts of uh, chants towards him. He was the most hated wrestler and probably the best heel in the business at the time. Uh, and he's turned that around to be possibly the most beloved babyface. And now it's down to Gargano to prove that he can be a great heel. And I'm sure he can. He, he does tend to deliver with whatever's thrown at him. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. And um, I, I've got a funny feeling they're going to add a stipulation as well. I mean, they did have quite a few stipulation matches when they were feuding. Uh, so it would have been 2018. They had their kind of series oh, of matches. But that's um, nice. one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, but, but, yeah, I think their the last match they had was uh, TakeOver Phoenix. So that was over Rumble Weekend 2019. Um, but uh, yeah, no doubt they're going to deliver in the ring or around the ring or wherever they uh, have their match. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's another intriguing storyline um, and another kind of, uh, you know, pairing and dynamic between these two wrestlers. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, but uh, definitely, you know, you've got two of the best there. So they're definitely going to deliver uh, on oh. the microphone and in the ring. But uh, yeah, can't wait to see what happens with that. Um, then we had, a, you know, a really fun battle between two big men, uh, Ozilla, uh, Bronson Reed versus Killian Dane with some huge moves from these two big monsters, including a, a 
a, a superplex from Dane onto Reed that literally shook the ring. That was an awesome <laughs> move. Uh, Dane eventually got the ring, uh, the win from a, a Vader bomb, and it was nice to see Killian Dane picking up a win after some recent losses. Uh, but uh, a massive shout out to Bronson Reed, you know, who just looks more and more impressive every time I see him on my TV screen. Uh, so that was a really good big man match. Really enjoyed that one. Uh, then we had the, the grizzled young veterans. Uh, they were victorious over the Forgotten Sons. Did a pretty good tag team match, to be honest with you. Even Nigel McGuinness acknowledged that uh, this was one of the better matches he's seen from the Forgotten Sons in a long, long time. And, uh, you know, with the way things are looking, uh, GYV, the grizzled young veterans, are being pushed. And, um, it looks like they could be in contention for NXT Tag Team Gold. I mean, they've been in on NXT for a month or so now. They were part of the Dusty Classic, of course, got to the final. They lost to the Bros Awaits. But uh, I think, you know, they were one of the, the acts in that tournament that really got themselves over. They've had a few matches since that they've been uh, victorious in, including this one over the Forgotten Sons. So it looks like, you know, come WrestleMania weekend and take over Tampa, we could see GYV. Uh, they're a former NXT UK Tag Team Champions, but they could be going for the gold on the, uh, the gold on the black and gold brand. Uh, but uh, you a fan of uh, GYV, and uh, what did you think of their performances Wednesday? Yeah, uh, I think Gibson is off the chart when it comes to his promo work and stuff, which is probably one of the reasons as well that they've kind of gotten over this. Any time they put a mic in his face, the guy's delivered. Um, and sort of just the segments between him and Riddle leading up to the final but with gold, um, and it says a lot as well for unscripted promos. I know that's also always a big thing kicking about, and I kind of get the feeling that they just say to Gibson, just say what you want to say, and it, it, you know it's, it, it pays off. Um, they're awesome. I was a fan of the uh, Forgotten Sons probably when they were at their peak a couple of years ago, when they nearly won the Dusty Classic. Um, I think it was a good tag team. I think Riker's awesome. I think all three of them work. They just I think NXT management have lost faith in them. Um, and the fact that the veterans, you know, beat them two on three um, speaks volumes now. Yeah, I think they're a good act and they've grown on me. I, w- I wasn't a fan, uh, but I have become uh, more of a fan of theirs. I-, I think that they've got better as a team. I think their, their double team moves are quite devastating. Um, I was expecting them to do something more with Jackson Riker before now, to be honest with you. He's a, he's a big, imposing dude. You know, he looks good, uh, muscular, got some great tattoos, but I was expecting him to do more with him in the singles ranks, but they just seem to have kind of kept him alongside the, the other two. Um, so, yeah, you know, maybe a, a wasted opportunity. Maybe they should have pushed a button on those three sooner. But um, now they seem to be pushed as uh, more baby faces uh, against, the, certainly against the heel duo of Gibson and Drake in uh, this match on Wednesday. The Forgotten Sons were getting uh, getting baby face cheers from the fans. So well, that was quite interesting. A bit of a change of dynamics. They came out and stood up for America against the you know those nasty Brits who dare yeah. say something. Yeah, exactly. It's always it's always the the English and the the, the Brits that are that are portrayed as as the bad guys. Uh, oh, it, it, like any like any uh, Bond film or anything like that. It's always it's, it's always the the heel uh, English or British people, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> there we go. But then that led us nice. I'll tell you what, before we speak about the main event, I don't know if you caught kind of uh, throughout this week's episode of NXT, there was some strange kind of little pop up, little teaser vignettes. Um, there was like a, a ticking clock. There was a vulture uh, or an albatross. So that there were kind of explosions and destroyed buildings. And then at the very end, you heard uh, some voice saying uh, chaos reigns. Uh, so this is obviously, you know, building towards... Uh, something or somebody possibly making their debut on NXT sometime soon. There's been a you know a, a lot of theories online that it could be something connected to Killer Cross, who's recently signed with NXT. But uh, I don't know if you caught these uh, little snippets. But uh, any thoughts on uh, on what you saw there? A- any kind of any ideas on who they might be uh, about? Hey, um, I would probably say Killer yeah Killer Cross. Um, but I know they've been doing kind of like things on uh, Raw as well, haven't they? Like little like glitches and this, that, yeah. and the other. And, um, you know, they're talking. That's probably going to be the return of um, Ali um, or Cross. But yeah, he's going to turn up somewhere. I think he's he's a perfect fit for NXT. Um, but to be fair, he's, he's awesome. He could fit on NXT Raw or SmackDown. But I'm kind of hoping with the freedom he goes to NXT, just because I think he'll. Will shine more there with a bit of creative freedom. 
Yeah, totally. And um, yeah, I think you're spot on there, definitely. But I uh, can't wait to see Killer Cross or. Uh, I don't know if they're going to give him a, a gimmick change, a name change. They probably will. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's an outstanding athlete, uh, a really good wrestler, fantastic in front of the camera. So, uh, yeah, can't wait to see what happens there. But uh, let's talk about the main event of this week's NXT then. So it was Charlotte Flair versus Bianca Belair. Um, I, I was kind of, you know, in, in the last few weeks, I've been speculating that or maybe hoping, wishful thinking that Belair would be added to the match at Mania, turn it into a three-way. I think that would kind of make it a bit more entertaining. Uh, I think Charlotte Flair is an excellent, excellent wrestler, but um, Rhea Ripley, I'm not quite convinced that she's kind of the full package inside the ring, and I'm much more entertained by somebody like Bianca Belair, to be honest with you. But uh, in this match, you had Charlotte Flair. Um, she, she had like a, a big superstar entrance, and she was uh, promptly told by the NXT faithful that she don't go here. So she wasn't welcomed back to, with, with open arms by the NXT crowd. Uh, this match started with some you know, pretty good chain wrestling between these two, with uh, Belair displaying some of her athleticism and, and strength uh, before Flair struck back with a few trademark Flair knife-edge chops. Uh, this was probably the most competitive match I've seen Charlotte Flair in in a long, long time, especially when you compare this match to anything she's done on Raw Smackdown over recent years. Um, but uh, this match was really good. The fans were really into it. They were on their feet uh, for quite a dramatic ending as Belair and Charlotte Flair, they, they exchanged spears. Uh, so first a spear from Bianca Belair, then a spear from Charlotte Flair. This allowed Charlotte Flair to hit her natural selection finisher. She hooked the legs uh, of Belair and got the pinfall victory. Uh, Flair then uh, went to the outside. She picked up a steel chair. She went back inside, wrapped the chair around uh, Bianca Belair's leg before dropping a knee. And then she applied her figure eight uh, leg lock on Belair. Then current NXT Women's Champion Rhea Ripley. She came out to chase uh, Charlotte Flair out of the ring uh, with the show going off the air with Ripley holding up her NXT Championship high above her head. So Nick... You know, this was a really good match. The fans loved it. Um, you know, I would go so far as to say that this was probably a better match than what we're likely to see between Flair and Ripley at WrestleMania. And that might be slightly controversial, but I think that, you know, with the WWE fingerprints over such a match uh, between Flair and Ripley, it's, you know, it's probably not going to be as good as what we saw on Wednesday night between Bianca Belair and Charlotte Flair. Uh, am I being a bit too harsh on WWE? Um, but, you know, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts on... Um, this match and uh, you know what we're likely to see um, on April the 5th at Mania No I fully agree with you I think um, they had such a good match because again um, to mention it the creative freedom that they have in NXT um, I think they're allowed to do a bit more stuff to have a bit more input it's not as um, scripted out or move set, um, you know, it's just, it's just not as structured. They can probably call it, you know, within the match, they can get a feel for the match, they can feel what the, the fans are going for, and you know, call a spot after a spot. Um, whereas, yeah, at Mania, I think it's literally going to be like, right, you do this, 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 and it's just gonna, yeah, yeah, you're not going to get that sort of um, no. genuine, um, energy between you know, Rhea and Charlotte. Uh, Belez, again, off the chart. You know, she's... Uh, I'm not bothered that she lost. I think it just adds to the fact of when she does get that title, eventually, you know, she'll, she'll have earned it. Uh, yeah, it's just... And also, the, the timing at the end um, kind of was off when Ripley came out to make the save. That was... I don't know if that's down to Ripley or somebody, you know, mistimed it. Uh, but she seemed to come out and then kind of dawdle around for a few seconds, like... Uh, and then she dashed down to make the save. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I thought it was a fantastic match and a really, really good episode of NXT. And what, what I did notice this week compared to previous weeks, and I, I've been quite hard on the, the fans inside the Full Sail Arena or the NXT Arena, whatever they're calling it nowadays. I've been quite hard on the uh, NXT fans, um, you know, always campaigning for NXT to go on the road and to, you know, do their Wednesday night show uh, kind of in not necessarily big arenas, but uh, in front of fresh, uh, fresh audiences, fresh eyes, um, new environments um, to bring a bit more life and a bit more freshness to the product on Wednesday nights. But the, the fans here on this Wednesday, I mean, there were some good matches, some really, really good matches and some good action. And I thought the fans were really into it. So, um, you know, I take back some of my harsh comments I've laid on them over recent weeks. But uh, this match in particular definitely had the fans on their feet. They were really, really into it. Uh, loved the, the action between Belair and Charlotte Flair. And like you say, 
Charlotte Flair just seemed to wrestle with a, a lot more freedom. It was the same as when AJ Styles made his appearance on NXT at the back end of last year. And, you know, when these wrestlers that you see every single week on Raw and every single week on SmackDown and the main roster and on pay-per-views every single month, and their matches just seem like, you know, paid by numbers. Uh, you know what they're going to do. You know the spots. You can always predict the moves as they happen. And, uh, you know, it just seemed uh, like she was enjoying what she was doing in the ring she was wrestling with a lot more freedom you could really tell in the way the match kind of developed that it was a match that you hadn't really seen from charlotte flair like this in a long long time um but so i think that really really added to it and they were obviously given the instructions to go out there enjoy themselves have a good match and they did have a great match and the fans really appreciated it but uh, yeah i think that's one of the better matches i've seen uh from charlotte flair in a long long time but uh, love the hell out of it and then next week on nxt nick you've got a couple of big matches to look forward to two big steel cage matches i understand you've got dakota kai Tegan Knox. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is going to be their blow off match, whether this is going to be the last match. We'll see of these two, but that's going to be inside of a steel cage. You've got the added drama of having uh, Dakota Kai's new uh, kind of uh, bodyguard, um, it Rina Gonzalez or uh, Raquel Gonzalez, whatever they're calling it nowadays. Uh, but uh, how that's going to play into it. But uh, And then you've got the Velveteen Dream going up against Roderick Strong in another match of theirs. They, they had a great match. I think it was on last week's NXT. Yeah. Next week, they're going one-on-one -on -one in a steel cage. So a couple of good matches there. Uh, in particular, Velveteen Dream, you know what he's like. He's bound to do some sort of death-defying leap from the top of the cage. Uh, I don't know if he'll go as far as to do a moonsault like Cody did last week, uh, but possibly a you know, big elbow or something like that. But uh, uh, did those two matches on next week's show, do they uh, do anything for you? Do they intrigue you? If so, what are you looking forward to the most? Uh, yeah, they both do. Uh, mentioned her earlier on, massive T. Good Knox fan. Been a fan of her uh, since obviously in the UK scene as Nixon Newell. Um, mm. She's awesome. Um, and the fact that she's obviously a massive comic book fan and uh, Captain Marvel fan pops me all the time. Um, the cage match obviously is genuinely used to be, you know, the final match of a feud. That's how you ended a feud was in a cage match. That's old school, you know, mentality. So. Um, whether that means this is the final match or whether they're just going to continue on. I think they've still got legs. I don't think they need to do a cage match yet. I think they could have had a few more matches and then, you know, finished it with a cage match. Uh, as for the Albertine strong one, yeah, I can, I'm kind of hoping this is their final match. Um, the matches were awesome, but, I, you know, I think Dream can go after uh, some other people now. He could go, you know, after the Undisputed Era one by one if it eventually leads to him going after the Cole. Uh, you know, for the title. Yeah, awesome. I totally agree. Yeah, I, I think that's where it's heading, certainly with Velveteen Dream. Um, and we could see a development in, in, in that kind of um, thread next Wednesday, but I, I'm expecting the Velveteen Dream to uh, uh, go on to face Adam Cole at TakeOver Tampa over Mania weekend. So that'll be a great match. Um, so, um, yeah, looking forward to next week and those two steel cage matches. But um, 